All right, students, in this video, I'm going to go over some uh, exercise questions on solving square root functions. So let's take a look. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to solve for x. In order for me to solve for x, I need to isolate x. So right now, in this situation, I have x's inside of these square roots. I need to get them out of the square root somehow. So to undo a square root, right, I will need to square both sides. So to square both sides, okay, what will happen is I'll end up with 8x plus 1 is equal to 9x. Don't really need parentheses here, just a force of habit that I have, okay? All right, so we get this, and then we uh, subtract uh, 8x from both sides. We end up with 1 is equal to x. Now, whenever you're dealing with square root functions, it is always advisable for you to check to see whether or not the solutions that you have um, works, okay? So uh, you're gonna see in a moment where we are, there is a possibility where we will end up with solutions that will not work even though the numbers that we get are real numbers. So let's just do a quick check, okay? So this is eight times one plus one. Is it equal to square root of nine times one? Indeed, it does work. Square root of 9 is equal to square root of 9. 3 is equal to 3. Let's take a look at the next one. So, again, very similar situation where we have uh, x's on both sides. <coughs> Excuse me. However, in this case, uh, we have an x inside of a square root, and on the other side, we do not have um, x's inside of a square root. So what do we do? Well, we still are going to take the square. We are still going to square both sides. We'll end up with, if we square both sides, x squared equal to negative eight plus nine x. And what we essentially have done is we've taken a square root equation and turned it into a quadratic equation, where we're going to solve any quadratic equation that we're familiar with. Right? We we are super familiar with it at this point. We're going to subtract both sides by nine x and add eight and set it equal to zero. And at this point, then you should be able to make a decision as to how you're gonna solve this, either by factoring, quadratic equation, or completing the square. So, um, you know, after you have the equation isolated, or you have the equation set to equal to zero, you can make better call as to what you're gonna do. So this turns into, it is indeed factorable, x minus one and x minus eight, so therefore, x will equal to 1 or 8. And again, we need to check. So we have 1 is equal to square root of negative 8 plus 9 times 1. Is this indeed equal to 1? Yes, it is. Square root of 1 is 1. And we got to double check again for 8. Is 8 equal to square root of negative 8 plus 9 times 8? And as it turns out, it certainly is. This is square root of 64, and square root of 64 is indeed 8. Let's do it again. Very similar situation where we have uh, variables on both sides of the equation. However, one, uh, one of the um, variables is inside of a square root. So no biggie. We're going to square both sides. So we'll end up with b minus 2 squared is equal to 4 b minus 3. And in order for me to solve this, okay, I now see again we have a quadratic equation at hand. I'm going to foil the, the left-hand side and bring over the right-hand side. So I have b squared minus 4b plus 4 is equal to 4b minus 3. Subtract 4b from both sides. I end up with b squared minus 8b plus 7 is equal to zero. And from here we can make our call whether or not this thing is factorable, and as it turns out, it is factorable. We have b minus one and b minus seven. So therefore b will, z will equal to one or positive seven. We gotta make sure that what we're doing here, okay, that these uh, solutions do indeed work. So let's, let's see. If I take one, okay, and put it in, I get one minus two. Does this equal to square root of 4 times 1 minus 3? And from here you can see it doesn't. This is negative 1 and square root of 1. They don't equal. 
even though our answer here is real. What about seven? We gotta make sure that having one solution not working does not guarantee that the second uh, equate uh, that the second solution will work. So I take b equal to seven and put it in. I get seven minus two. Will it equal to four times seven minus three? So seven minus two is five, and yes, it is. 25, square root of 25, square root of 25 is indeed 5. So the only solution that we have is 7. We call this b equal to 1 our extraneous root. Meaning, meaning that um, we got an answer, but this answer doesn't really make any sense. Okay, um, The left and right side of the equation uh, doesn't really work. And in a, in a separate video, I want to go through, like, explaining why this happens, like, why we end up with extraneous roots. Okay. Question 14. And I think, oh, there's two more. Okay, so question 14. Let's take a look. So now I have two square roots. Oh, boy. Things are getting really nasty. Okay, so what are we going to do? You know, we, we just don't be afraid of these problems. Um you want to, again, tr uh, try to approach this in the same manner, but just be calm and methodical, okay? So what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to bring one of the square roots to the other side, and then I'm going to square both sides. Why am I bringing one of them to the other side? Well, that's because um, I want to, I, I, I don't want to foil out, okay, this entire thing, although we end up in the same place, um, I assure you, okay? So either either squaring both sides as it is right now, or you can actually bring one of the terms to the other side. I assure you, we will end up with the same solution. So if I add, okay, the square root of 2n plus 3 to the other side, I'll end up with square root of 2n plus 3 minus 3. I'm going to get rid of this. And from here, I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to square both sides. And if I do, I'll end up with 2n minus 6 is equal to square root of 2n plus 3 minus 3 quantity squared. And this looks really disgusting, right? Where we will need to foil that out. And again, just don't, don't be afraid. Uh, so I'm going to square the square root. So I have 2n plus 3 Okay, and then subtract it by 2 times 3 times square root of 2n plus 3, and then plus 9. So if you're wondering, like, how am I able to do that? That's like superhuman, like, abilities. It's, it's not. You just need to recognize that structure when we're foiling perfect squares. Okay, we can immediately jump to this, which is why practicing um, that skill on squaring things, okay, is so important uh, in previous lessons and earlier in the year. So we get to, up to this point, <clears throat> and you can start seeing like things will begin to cancel. The two ends will cancel. The um, uh, I subtract both sides by three, right? So I end up with um, negative nine, but then I I also subtract nine, so I end up with negative eighteen is equal to negative 6 square root of 2n plus 3. I get to this stage. And I want to divide both sides by negative 6. I end up with square root of 2n plus 3 is equal to positive 3, because negative 18 divided by negative 6 is positive 3. I want to square both sides. I end up with 2n plus 3 is equal to 9. Subtract 3, divide by 2, I end up with n is equal to 3. Now, I, I again got to check whether or not this is, um, whether or not this makes any sense. So I'm going to take 3 and now I'm going to plug it back in. So if I take 3 and plug it, plug it back in, I'll end up with square root of 2 times 3 minus 6 minus square root of 2 times 3 plus 3. And does this indeed come out to equal to negative 3? It indeed does. Because this goes to 0 minus square root of 9. 
and square root of 9 is 3, so it's negative 3 equal to negative 3. They do work. So I do have an answer here, and it does equal to 3. Let's take a look at the last one now. I'm going to run out of room for this. All right, so uh, I am going to move this. All right, so again, very similar situation. I'm going to square both sides because I um, the, uh, the the square root was brought to the other side already. Okay, uh, so I have um, I'm going to square both sides. So I have two x. Whoops, plus two is equal to, and I'm just going to square this. This becomes four uh, minus. 2 times negative 2 times square root of 2x minus 10. And then plus 2x minus 10. So immediately from this, okay, I can see that the 2x is canceled. I can see that the um, anything else cancels here. So I want to subtract both sides by 4. And I want to subtract uh, add both sides by 10. So I end up with 8 is equal to positive 4 square root of 2x minus 10. Divide both sides by 4, I get 2. So 2 is equal to 2x minus 10. Square both sides, I end up with 4 is equal to 2x minus 10. Add 10 to both sides, I get 14 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2, x is equal to 7. And now the moment we've been all, all been waiting for, we got to figure out whether or not this makes any sense, right? So we're going to substitute 7 in, back into the original equation. So we get square root of 2 times 7 plus 2. Will it equal to negative 2 minus square root of 2x minus 10? Those of you who have a good number sense should be able to see this immediately that this will not work. So this is square root of 16 on the left-hand side, right? 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 2 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. On the right-hand side, notice everything is negative. Whoops. That should not be an x. That should be a 7. So if I take square root of 2 times 7 minus 10, that's square root of 14 minus 10, or it's really square root of 4, or really it's negative 2 and neg so 4 does not equal to negative 4 so x equal to 7 even though x equal to 7 is a solution should I say it's an extraneous solution so this is extraneous there is no solution to this problem so there's no solution nothing works Nothing works. So let me get rid of this. So x equal to 7 is extraneous. Okay, there's no solution.